A special Tuesday edition of the watch list solely focused on tomorrow night. Lee Montagna, welcome. Hello, Jared. Robert. Hello, Joey. I can't, wait. I can't wait for tomorrow night. What song would you fight for, Jared? Yeah, That's a good that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know what it is. <laughs> All right. Help us with the watch list. So let's start with Aaron Norton. Well, Aaron Norton's clearly the most important bulldog. I know that he's not he's probably not their best player. Marcus Pontepelli most would say is their best player. But at 22 years of age and almost 80 games. This kid's going to see a lot of football targeted towards him with no Bruce there. He, he could win the Coleman, and maybe he has to win the Coleman. I don't know whether that's good or a bad thing, but he's going to get a lot of opportunity. He was only targeted eight times a game last year. He's going to get closer to 13, 14, 15 a game. And he is incredibly difficult to stop. So I think we're going to stop and, and talk about what this package is that is Aaron Norton. I don't know if I've seen a player that plays as fearless football as he plays. In the air, he's fearless, he, isn't he? He's unbelievable. And he's yeah, learning yeah. more and more his forward craft. So we didn't see him really push off much last year. But look how quickly he gets separation. OK, it doesn't work out. And he still finds a way. And this is why a lot of people compare him to Wayne Carey, because he still finds a way to get back with the flight against the grain. Look at this here. This is a quick kick from a stoppage. He's not entitled to think that this ball is his. He's not entitled to run back... He doesn't take his eyes off the footy. He knows what's coming. He knows there's a pack of ten players that he's going to crash into. But he doesn't shirk the issue. In he goes, bang. That's a huge contested mark. And I just think we're saying that everything's going to fall on this kid's shoulders. But maybe he's up to it. Maybe, maybe he has got a 70-goal season in him. And I know that's incredibly difficult to kick 70. But maybe with the weight of supply, maybe corrects a little bit of accuracy at goal, he can get there. The predictability of going to him all the time. It's as good and bad. Opposition. We saw it in the pre-season games. Mm. But he's going up against two, sometimes three. How much do you think that could be an issue? Not just tomorrow night, but throughout the season. Yeah, well, night. we've been talking about Joey and I a fair bit. Look, it's a tough way to play. It's a tough way to live, isn't it? Having to win mm. contested marks all the time. But only Tom Hawkins took more marks inside 50 last year. And only Harry Mackay took more contested marks inside 50. So he's in good company at that age. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can offer as early as tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I, think, he, I think he has to kick 75 goals because I'm worried about the gap in the firepower between these two sides. So if you take a look at some of the numbers from late last year, you've got to remember Melbourne only really got their offence going at the back end of the season when Ben Brown came in. In the first 19 rounds, they'd only kicked 100 points three times. It was their defence that was getting them over the line. Then in the last seven weeks, four times they kicked 100-plus points. Their firepower was awesome. So these were the last seven games for Melbourne and for the Bulldogs, points four. You can see the gap there. Melbourne were flying on all cylinders and it crescendoed in that grand final where the Western Bulldogs, that coincided when, when Josh Bruce went out of the side. Mm. And you can see there the ranking scores per inside 50. The Bulldogs really dropped away in that period when Bruce went out of the side. Norton kicked the most goals with 10 in those last seven games. I'm just concerned about the firepower of the two sides. I think there's a real discrepancy going into this season with the ability of Melbourne's forward line structure with Fritch and Ben Brown as opposed to the Bulldogs. So you're framing this around Bontempelli. Well, now it comes to the, for me, I think Bontempelli has to be the foil for Norton. I think he has to play more forward. So if you see there the percentage of disposals in the front half, look at Stringer and Martin Petrarca. They're all up 60% of their possessions are in the front half. Last year it was only 50-50 for Bont. Yet he still kicked 31 goals. He still had 34 assists. If he gets that up to 60-plus percent and 65 percent of his disposals in the front half, he could kick 45 goals. I don't think they need him in the midfield. They've got enough in the midfield with all the other boys, with Bailey Smith and McRae and, and Trelaw and outside, Dunkley. Outside, outside, outside. He, he needs to, for me, play as a, as a more of a forward this year if they are to, to try and match Melbourne and go motor for motor with him tomorrow night. He's such a gun. You're he's right. A, absolutely. Kingy, I was watching... It, might have, it wasn't this game. I was watching a pre-season game and you were, you were replaying... Bontempelli on the move through the contest. Mm. You got Libba staying in the contest and fighting, and all those people you mentioned, they're they're their second receiver, aren't they? Mm. First receiver. Yeah, yeah. If you take Bont away from the midfield, you think it'll affect their midfield? I I, I think he's so good. Yeah. Like he's a great player. I think it'll have a serious effect. Really? On their oh, midfield. I think he just needs to play in the front half if they're a chance to win. He needs to kick 45 plus goals this season what do you without think? Bruce. What do you, no. Who's their second tall forward? Yeah. I was going to ask you both. Who's the, it's not, I think if you take Bonnie out of the midfield, you don't worry who your second tall forward is. It ain't getting in there. It ain't getting in there with Liberatore, McRae, Trelaw, Bailey Smith, Dunkley. It's still a pretty good midfield. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, but Bonds. Uh, he's he's there you go. He's there you go. It's going to be really interesting anyway. Mm. The Melbourne side of things, you've got on the Fritch Twitch. The Fritch Twitch, he's the most awkward matchup. And if you're in the opposition coach's box, Jared, you're twitching. Put it that way. And he's, he's, he's different because he kicks goals in different ways. 
And we all talk about the volume of goals that he kicked, 12 goals in a three-game a three game final series. He gets space. He makes you pay. He, he doesn't miss. He, he can get you on the lead. He gets you dropping into holes. He, he really nice ignited idea. them in that grand final, didn't he? So I just wonder who, who gets him tomorrow night. And when Petrarca goes forward... The matchups really get thrown into chaos. That's what really uh, excites me about this guy. We don't talk about him enough. Um, he's probably the number one player in the competition in terms of turning a targeted entry into a goal uh, as that player. So he's, he's, a, he's a superstar. Yeah. We don't talk about him like we should. And what they did really well was we all thought when Ben Brown came in, he would be the full forward because that's what he did at the, uh, to the Kangaroos. But he played high and allowed mm. Fritch to play out of the mm. goal square. And Fritch kicked nearly 30 goals in those last 10 games with Ben Brown in the side. It's an awesome, it's an awesome forward structure they've got going this Season. Have you got a solution in the Baileys somewhere? Well, I think it has to be Bailey Williams. You look at their other defenders. Bailey Dale, they don't want to lock down on a defender. They've got Caleb Daniel, Ed Richards. So it probably has to be Bailey Williams. But as you said, if Petrarca drifts down there, who goes to Petrarca? It's going to be a bit of a headache for the dogs. And a cosy oh, finish. I want to put this on watch, on the watch yeah, list. Yeah. It, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And the, the nephew of Byron... Little Cozzy, he got he got a little wicket in the pre-season games. Just going to keep a track on it, Robbo. Just mm -hmm. have a look at this one. Just a little shepherd, little timings, everything with these bumps. And just watch Cozzy come in. Here's Zach Williams. Mm -hmm. Not really watching oh, bang. And bang. Hang on a minute. I'm, oh, I think I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Hang on, maybe I'm not okay. Not sure. And then the trainers come out. No, I'm not all good. <laughs> and Cozzy just does it so well. I mean, he's only he's only 20 years of age, a slight body. But look at look at Zach. He, he can't even tackle. He can't move. He has to get off the ground. Yep. No, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. I'm tapping out. Uh -huh. So I just want to keep a watch on it. I yep. think that he's 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 had a couple of moments where he's looking to hurt Jared. So one is the tally so far. Very good. So how does tomorrow night pan out in your mind? Uh, who knows? I mean, they're, they're two very good footy teams. Joey's probably right. They've probably got more firepower. But Bontempelli did it last year in one of the games where he just caused chaos around the stoppages. He set the game up the way that he wanted to, and we reviewed that heavily last year. Maybe they can do that again. Yeah, I think that Melbourne have got too much firepower. Norton will have to kick six and take five contested marks if they're to challenge Melbourne on the scoreboard, kick enough points. He's in love with Nathan Buckley. Are you in love with Aaron Norton? Uh, not as much as Kingy. <laughs> <laughs> Kingy's in love with the big Norton. Uh, Air Norton. Air Norton. You need more love. You need to get some yeah. love. Who do you love in yeah. footy? Uh, Nick Petrarca. Rewell. Nick Rewell. Uh, you you contemplate that as we do. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Rewell. Lenny Hayes. Uh, we'll have a lovely scene. <laughs>